This week in the boardroom, brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext, along with Governance Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and Grant Thornton, and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. I'm T.K. Kerstetter with Corporate Board Member, and I'm happy to be joined by my co-host, Scott Cutler, Executive Vice President with the NYSE Euronext. And Scott, um, we, you know, we're approaching the end of the year. We always have a lot of shows that we sort of do together at the end of the year. But one of the ones that I wanted to make sure that we sort of challenged ourselves with was sort of the idea of sort of looking at this board refresher on strategic thinking. And um, I thought that we would not look, we don't want to sort of cover those traditional things like um, finding the right CEO and the, the things that are always typically discussed as board duties. I sort of want to look at maybe those issues that you would hope that a board would be thinking about that aren't maybe regularly discussed all the time, but that from our experiences that we might be able to give a little guidance out on these are issues that we would suggest the boards are thinking about. So I thought maybe we'd sort of flip-flap and it back sounds and great. forth. And why don't you start off? Sure. Well, uh, my first one is actually in the title itself, and that is the board's responsibility for strategic development. It's all part of long-term value creation. Also understanding that management teams are responsible for implementation of that, of that strategy. But, but uh, I think there are really three things that are required for effective board oversight of strategy. The first one is access to the right set of information around uh, uh, financials, around customers, um, access to management team and deeper within the organization. So I think it's an uh, informational challenge. The second one is really from a board perspective, having KPIs, key performance indicators, to know how a company is developing along those lines of strategy. And the third is really just understanding from a leadership perspective how uh, the management team is implementing that strategy. I read a recent report that was pretty interesting put out by PwC where uh, they, they cited that 75% of surveyed public directors would like to spend a lot more time focused on strategy, which I thought was, was interesting. But only one-third of boards actually discuss strategy uh, two times a year. Um, less than half actually devote uh, time in each board meetings to, to strategy. Um, but I think in terms of that uh, oversight and implementation of strategy, I think some of the best pra uh, practices uh, that, that I would suggest if a board is focused on that strategy is really uh, probably first and foremost uh, integrate that strategy into risk. Uh, the second one is really um, establishing um, uh, return on investment guidelines that can help uh, guide uh, investment and acquisition decisions. Uh, the third is really a key understanding that in today's environment IT and information resources technology are directly linked uh, to the implementation of strategy. And probably the fourth is I think a lot of boards are now looking to external uh, benchmarks to independently verify the strategic direction that the management team is advising on them. So this is one of those things that's going to require continual focus of the board. Yeah, just make sure you clarify one thing you know, for our audience, and, and that's the word oversight of the plan for the board because it's still the management's responsibility to bring that plan there. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be a lot of dialogue and making sure that it goes in the right direction, but let's make, just, just cover yeah. that just a second so that we it, can make sure we don't miscommunicate that. Yeah, it's, it's a key point, but I think it's one of those things that clearly the management team, as you say, has the responsibility for creating and developing that strategy. But from a board's perspective, when you're thinking about how you're creating value over long, long term, as a board, that strategy and understanding, under, understanding of that strategy has to be infused with everything that you're doing. And so that's why I think, uh, to me, it's one of those things that is lacking in a lot of boards and probably something that should be focused on. Yeah. Great point. My turn? Yeah. 
My first issue that I wanted to talk about is culture. And um, it's a word that is thrown around. I'm not sure that it's thrown around enough because I think it is the most critical building block for a successful company is making sure that one understands and is comfortable with its culture. And I think the board has a responsibility to make sure that that building block is in place. Now, having said that, every company is different in the sense that some have a culture, okay, and you are going out and if you are having a new CEO, you are looking for somebody that will fit into that culture, okay? You look at different cultures. You look at uh, Apple or 3M, great innovation you know, companies that culture is sort of built around that concept and how they develop their products and what they do. And I'm sure the board is looking for somebody when they come and, ha and have succession to have somebody fit in there. Um, I think of uh, those that focus on the customer, uh, Ritz-Carlton or um, Tractor yeah. Supply. Yeah. Okay, these are ones that are very customer focused. When they do succession planning, it's all about continuing that culture. Yet there's other companies where the culture is not in place, okay, where the CEO and the board play a very major role in doing that. Sometimes you see CEOs come in with a very good vision and, and help create a new culture in a company and carry that forward. And then the, and, and the board is there to be su very supportive of that, of that in those cases. And they may have interviewed a candidate that actually can bring a change to an organization. But at the end of the day, the board needs to sort of make sure that it understands that this is our culture and here's what we're, here's what we're doing with it. Um, uh, pay packages are, uh, and um, programs throughout the organization are important. Performance reviews. Um, uh, values in the company, all those things have to be supported along the way. And, they'll, the, and lastly, their actions. For example, if you, if you were somebody out in the field or in another country that met your goals, but you got them on cutting corners with you know, um, compliance or one of those things, um, that all, the decisions that the board management make all contribute to what that culture is. So to me, that's my building, my first building okay. block. Sa same question on strategy, which is, what is that balance between a board's involvement in implementation versus oversight on culture? Yeah, and to me, every organization is, is different. I'm not sure that there, like, I think there is a more standard answer with strategy, but it all depends on the history and the evolution of where a particular company is at, to me, on how much the board, hopefully the board is just, again, making sure that it's in place, that the, they can step away where management can't and take a look at performance reviews. Are we saying that we're customer driven, yet all our performance reviews give high grades if you have a good audit, okay? Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's not working in tandem to support that. So, um, but in any case, I think we agree that management is in charge of the implementation of things and the board needs to be supportive except where in this case where it may not exist or there's a change in management and the board has to take a stronger role. Okay. Um, all right, so my, my second one, somewhat related to the first, is around risk management. And I, I just can't come through Hurricane Sandy, I can't come through the financial crisis or come through some of the events that we've seen in supply chain without really focused on a board's responsibility for risk management. Um, I think risk management is much more than, than just business continu continuity planning, tr uh, planning for catastrophes. When, when you look at the types of events that have occurred, you know, even this year where you've had you know, technical problems with, this, with systems that have brought down companies, where you've had problems with a key distributor or supply chain in a key geographic location that goes down and you know, brings down or shuts down companies. When you've got uh, individual management teams or CEOs where one issue has, has you know, typically brought down uh, a company and clearly exposed, you know, issues related to, to risk. Uh, we all know about 
you know, coming through the financial crisis about the lack of understanding that many boards and management teams had on, on the financial risk. And so I think this is really one of those things that requires a holic, holistic assessment, but maybe from a, dis, a, a different perspective, which is b just beyond, um, beyond just the backup and the dis disaster recovery, but really how is risk infused into every aspect um, of everything that the board is, board is thinking about. Um, and so, and so I think that, that just like strategy is, is something that uh, is infused in a lot of things, to me, risk uh, as well. It goes through uh, financials, HR, culture. Um, it goes through governance. Um, and I just think it's, it's, it's something that is uh, uh, something the board should be more focused on. Um, just a point on that, that when, again, we want to make sure that this is a oversight role. Right. The responsibility for initially for managing that risk is certainly in the, the management level. Um, imagine, though, the companies that have 50 companies in 50 different countries, okay? And you're sitting on top as a board member in that. Um, it's daunt it is absolutely daunting, the amount of risk and, and what has to have. I, I am sympathetic to boards that have that challenge. But one of the things that I would say that's very, very important is that risk management has to start at the department or the division level. They're the first groups. And if I'm sitting on the board, I want to make sure that that's happening at all that levels because they're going to know that business and those risks better than I will ever know as a director. And that's going to, again, create the foundation for us to be successful. I may look at the catastrophic risks and look that the process is in place, but there's no way that I'm ever going to get my arms around the risk of those 50 companies in those right. 50 countries. It's actually one of the reasons that, that, that we uh, decided to get very directly into the compliance and risk space with the acquisition of Corpedia, uh, which is really focused on establishing policies and guidelines in a lot of these areas around risk and compliance. And particularly to your point, especially for globally distributed organizations where policies and cultures are, are important, having one ubiquitous unified approach to many of these things is, is, is certainly important. Well, on my um, second one, and, I, and we're going to run out of time, so I'll make yeah. it, it'll be our last one. Um, I, would, I would say the issue that I'd like to bring up is what's called balancing major constituencies. And to me, the board is in a position to take a step back from the day-to-day -day and look of, at the balance within an organization. And the major constituencies, to me, are the shareholders, the customers, and the employees. And there was a study done by some Harvard professors that talked about when they looked at the great companies, they were, quote, in balance with their constituencies. And the example that, that they give is, let's say that... Um, you would offer a, a, um, a special dividend, okay, to shareholders, but that was at the expense maybe of keeping your salaries competitive or getting your top-notch people in, into your organization. That works fine for the short term, meaning for the shareholders who are happy in the short term, but if something, if an imbalance like that exists where you're not putting equal concern into your human talent and whatever, um, then your organization is going to get out of balance. Because ultimately, in that, in that balance that I just explained, all of a sudden customer service is going to start to be affected, then the whole thing goes away. So the board gets a chance to take a step back and look and say, okay, are we in balance? Do we have the talent? What, is our, what are we reaching in the way of our products and service to our customers? making sure that equal emphasis is being placed on the criteria that's going to make a long-term successful company. It, it's interesting you bring that up. It's something that we discussed a lot a couple of years ago in the NYC Corporate Governance uh, uh, d Commission, and that was really this, this change in governance, uh, which there are some countries and regions of the world that change that responsibility of board and expand it to responsibility beyond shareholders to include stakeholders, which is said instead of just shareholder value creation, it's really stakeholder, which obviously looks at uh, financial, internal, external, community, environment as a much more expansive definition of governance than we have today in the U.S., but uh, maybe you're suggesting that type of 
sea, sea change. <laughs> well, that may have to be another show. Um, but um, I enjoyed this. I enjoy us being challenged by going through this thought process, and I hope that our audience has found it to be useful as well. And uh, that, unfortunately, uh, we've run out of time, but we hope that you've enjoyed this opportunity to join us talking about the strategic uh, refresher today for the board. And we hope you'll join us next week when we'll have a chance to cover another critical topic to make you a better board member or committee member. And we'll see you then. Join us again next week for This Week in the Boardroom. Brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext along with Governance Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and Grant Thornton, and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.